Oh, this physician solved the Virginia being, and he describes it in detail, along with some other really interesting news. A breakdown of the new law that will uh, hopefully compel the you know shadow government, the control group, whatever you want to call them, to pony up with the UFO materials. Uh, Einstein apparently uh, looked at uh, UFO. And uh, some other really interesting news. So uh, let's talk about it. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like. Please subscribe. Share on social media. And let me know what you think in the comments below. All right. Unfortunately, uh, this gentleman doesn't speak English. Uh, and um, the subtitles are probably going to be blocked by my big head. So I, I'm probably not going to be able to play this whole thing for you. Because uh, you're not going to be able to read it. I guess I can like read it out to you. Uh, he says, he always uh, showed the people who went to his house, right? Uh, yeah, talking about the, uh, he saw, yeah, let me clarify. He saw the video of the Virginia being. I just, yeah, he, he was not present with, with the being. I don't want to misstate that. He just saw the video. And um, yeah, so he's talking about the person who holds the video he was able to go over and see the video of the being. Uh, he showed the video, right, for us. A video of the being. Uh, they were beside him. Two people in lab coats here, two people in surgical suit. Yeah, because this is, this is the, the being is being um, examined by physicians. He is, he's a dying you know, just if you're not familiar with the Virginia case, I may be skipping ahead. Uh, uh, if you're not familiar with that case, just to quickly familiarize you, there was a UFO crash in Virginia, Brazil, some years ago, and there were two beings that were seen wandering around the town. They were captured. One died, or was possibly dead when they when they 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 captured it, and one was dying. And they brought it into, you know, their, their local hospital. And there are doctors examining it. And apparently this video is from that examination. So that's what he's talking about. And uh, I didn't see the military people from the surgical center, right? And the bottom part of the being was covered with a sheet. I saw the upper part, a thin thorax. The head is bigger, but the head is not our shape. The head is more angled. Like, like, uh, like there's on your website, more angled, right? Yeah, and he's, uh, they have a, apparently the interviewer on the website has a picture of the being that I just showed you with three small, uh, not, not a, a photograph, but an image, a artist rendition. It has three small protuberances on its head that are kind of horn-like. And it has big red eyes, practically no neck, very thin, and it moved. It moved the thorax, and it moved in the video. Moved very thin arms and very thin fingers. These horns were much smaller. And then you can see the protuberances. Now, the, the gentleman describes it as having very little neck. And that's a pretty long neck, I think. So it's not quite accurate. And um, I'm sure it's not 100%, but um, you, you can get a rough idea of what the being looked like. I mean, it's very humanoid. It's very, very humanoid. And a, a lot of these beings are uh, extremely humanoid. And in fact, it's kind of surprising how close Star Trek got uh, to a lot of this. I mean, it really is. I mean, when you think about it, because a, a lot of the beings, they look humanoid, but with lumps on their head, right? Or, or, or with big heads. Uh, I mean, stuff that you could do with makeup. I mean, really. I mean, it's, it's, it's shocking how uh, uh, much Star Trek got right. They're not the, the fantastic looking alien beings that you see in Star Wars. They're, they're more, I mean, they're, they do exist, the mantis beings and, and stuff like that. But uh, there are uh, so many humanoid looking beings. Of course, they're usually very small, not always. But, uh, but yeah, I just thought that was worth pointing out. Kind of funny. And the face is almost like the one on your website, much more like a tear. Yeah, he says it's got a tear shaped head. And it was hominid. Yeah, a small man, a small man. It didn't have our size. 
I'm six feet tall, he says. It was much smaller. And yeah, he only saw it from the top. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll link to that. But uh, yeah, so that is what the Virginia being looked like, more or less. Will we ever get to see that video? I know James Fox has been um, adamantly, you know, ardently pursuing that video. So, you know, and, and there are others that have seen it. And there's even, a, you know, a, a, a bootleg out there. Or, you know, somebody, somebody videoed the video surreptitiously. And uh, all right, so... The UFO legislation. What is up with the new UFO legislation? New and powerful UAP legislation made public today has been passed unanimously out of the Senate. And uh, this was on the 24th. Uh, out of the Senate Intelligence Committee, a body responsible providing oversight of all U.S. intelligence agencies. This new legislation has the potential to permanently clarify and alter the landscape of the UAP debate within public and consensus awareness. The facts. A new UAP-related legis legislation has been drafted and has been unanimously passed by the U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Uh, it puts official restrictions on any funding associated with UAP technologies and mandates compulsory reporting by U.S. industry of any UAP-related holdings to ensure there is congressional oversight. It's very important that he says U.S. industry. So we need to go over here to what Ross Coulthard says about who might have some of this tech, right? So this is an audio only, sadly, but here is what Ross Coulthard said. One of the other issues too, my friend, that I'm told is that a lot of the alleged recoveries, and this is new, I'm just about to reveal something new here. I just want to flag to our audience. This is significant, what's coming. I am told that a number of the recoveries were done by private aerospace. And so the issue then is, this is not necessarily US government technology. And there's a question as to the intellectual property. I, I think quite properly, if these companies have spent money, time and resources in, in, in essentially retrieving this technology, perhaps with the assistance of the US government and with its sanction, but if they've spent the time and the money, who owns that IP? And does the US government have the right to demand access to it? Personally, I think that um, in the interests of um, the public interest, I, I think the, the Congress at the very least should be being informed. Oh. Well, uh, that's what they're doing, Ross. That is absolutely what they're doing. So to get back to it, uh, yeah, so the U.S. technology, U.S. companies and even international companies have some of this technology. Now, Ross Coulthard has also called Wright-Patterson Air Force Base a veritable parking lot of UFOs. So if that is true, then clearly the government does have UFO technology in craft but it is also held in the private sector as well and has been for a long time. According to Colonel Philip J. Corso, right-hand man of General Truman, Corso was assigned the Roswell desk, according to his book, The Day After Roswell. Uh, he had all the materials and information on the Roswell crash that the Army had. Now, the Air Force seems to have the bulk of this, but the Army had some stuff, and it was the task of the guy that uh, manned the Roswell desk, the Roswell file, to farm this technology out to the private sector. And they had been doing this for years, for decades, leading to our modern age, because uh, apparently we did not get to our uh, current level, or, or the computer age, for example, without this technology. Uh, this alien technology allowed us to get from vacuum tube vacuum tubes to micro transistors leading to the miniaturization of computers and uh, our, our current computer age and, and various other technologies as well. So they've been doing this for a long time. It's in the private hands and um, et cetera, but they also have you know full craft. They've been conducting the crash retrievals themselves. Surely, you know, they are simply limbs of the control group which exists within and without the government. 
you know, it, it, need, it doesn't need any government. I don't need any man. I don't need no man. It doesn't, doesn't need a government. But it does exist in part in the government and in part in the private sector. And uh, yeah, so they've got stuff. They've got much juicier stuff than the few technologies that have been released to the public and that have changed our world. They've got unlimited energy sources. They've got all sorts of anti-gravity. I mean, can you imagine the stuff that they're sitting on and that now Congress is trying to get access to? Anyway, moving on, it clearly and precisely targets DOD or Intel community-related SAPs tasked with reverse engineering UAP craft or component technology. So this is where we're talking about the government government stuff, these special access programs. So it's in private hands. It is in uh, the government. The, the bill, um, it enacts regulations on all non-Earth origin or exotic, unidentified anomalous phenomenon material. Now, in the final bill, if it gets passed into law, I doubt they're going to keep the non-Earth origin part. You know, that was in the original language forming arrow, and then they nixed it in the final language. So I, I you know, because that would be disclosure, right? If they kept that in, if that became, a, you know, law, hey, pony up with your non-Earth origin uh, uh, material, uh, your, your technological material. So I, I, I doubt that's going to be signed into law. Now, if they just say non-Earth material, that's very vague. I mean, I guess you could say that's, you know, it could be an asteroid or something. Uh, but if they refine that and say, um, I mean, it does, it does say anomalous. So I think that's fairly definite. It's uh, non-Earth and it's anomalous. Anyway, I would like it better if it's a uh, technological. Anyway, related to acquisition on crash recovery. And it makes it illegal to fund any research for non-terrestrial technology unless companies report to Aero and allow for inspection of materials within a six-month window. The legislation directs disclosures to Aero, who in turn has been given a formal obligation to provide a written notification of such receipt to the appropriate committees of Congress and congressional leadership. So, if I had any faith at all in Arrow, I would be really excited about this. I don't have any faith in Arrow, unfortunately, uh, at, under his current leadership, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. And, you know, yeah, so th there it is. If you have faith in, in Dr. Kirkpatrick, then good for you. I, I hope you're right. Uh, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. The legislation zeroes in. Uh, there, there is some good news. There, there are signs that he may be leaving. There's some rumors that he wa he's wanting to step down. Of course, if he does, he's probably going to be replaced by somebody of like mind. You know, just like Bray and Moultrie. He's just a continuation of Bray and Moultrie. The legislation zeroes in the development of propulsion technology or aerospace craft that uses propulsion technology systems or subsystems that is based on or derived from or inspired by inspection, analysis, or reverse engineering of recovered UAP craft or materials. There you go. Re re reverse engineered tech from UFOs. Furthermore, the legislation details that any person currently or formerly under contract with the government that is in their possession material or information provided by or derived from the federal government relating to UAP that formerly or currently is protected by any form of special access or restricted access shall notify Arrow of such possession within 60 days, make UAP materials and information available to Arrow for assessment, analysis, and inspection within 80 days. Of course, what is Air going to do with it? Is it going to continue to lie and obfuscate as it has been doing since, since its inception under its um, present leadership? And even before then, before it was Arrow, when, when it was the UAP task force under Bray and Moultrie, who did nothing but lie and obfuscate, I would be shocked if it did anything else. How? Ever, with all this congressional oversight and interest, would it be conceivable that Kirkpatrick or whoever is running Arrow at that time would be compelled to pony up with the goods? 
you know, if, if they're able to get this material from whoever has it, or at least access to it, would Kirkpatrick still be able to withhold that from Congress? That information. I doubt, I, doubt, I doubt he'll have much in the way of materials. I don't know if he has a hangar devoted to UFOs in the, the Aero budget. But would he be compelled to share this with Congress? Does Congress have that, that power to, to, to get this out of him? I would love to see that. I, I hope that's what happens. So I am cautiously optimistic that something might come out of this. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. Is this going to be the silver bullet uh, that, uh, you know, we've already got the chink in the armor of the uh, control group or the cover up potentially with David Grush. Is it, are we going to get to the juicy meat underneath with this legislation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And okay, on uh, other news, this is a uh, uh, purportedly a video from the think tank, which does have some good UFO videos from time to time that I think are legitimate. And uh, it's showing a meteor-like UFO. At first, it looks just like a meteor, but then it changes course, which is possible evidence that the Las Vegas UFO, which looked an awful lot like a meteor, was in fact a UFO. And this uh, dovetails very nicely with some of the reporting I have done on the fireball UFOs. Uh, are we now seeing videos of the fireball UFOs, this thing in the Las Vegas UFO? Uh, I, I think that is very possible. Well, let's see what this sucker looks like. Allah. Boom, changes direction, what? Look at that. If this is legit, Allah. There we go. Pauses, changes directions, changes direction again. Love it. Love it. I mean, that looks legitimate. I mean, you know, CGI is so good these days, and sometimes there's even actors that will pretend. And uh, I mean, there's some good fakes out there. There really are. So, is that a fake? I mean, I think that looks solid. But, you know, who knows? But if this is solid, then I think this is good evidence that the Las Vegas UFO, uh, the, the, the green fireball or whatever it was, may have actually been a UFO. And maybe that's where those beings came from. Uh, the more I look into the Las Vegas case, the more I'm persuaded that it was probably a real event. I don't know about the object in the sky, but uh, I think that the family members did see some weird stuff. I do, I do. But I want more corroboration on that. I want to know for sure from some really good sources if it's true that the FBI seized uh, or made the police officers delete their body cam footage. Uh, if, if that's what happened, then that is uh, really telling and that would convince me 100% that this was a real incident um, and not a hoax. But I, uh, right now, I'm, I'm on the fence leaning toward the Las Vegas case being real. And if this video is the real thing, that is evidence that that thing in the sky may have been part of it. Okay, one final uh, news story for today, and that is, uh, this is a confession from uh, Einstein's assistant, Dr. Shirley Wright who was present with him when he was taken to the Roswell UFO. And I'm not going to play this whole thing. It's 20 minutes long. But this is, she's describing how big the ship is. And I'll just, I'll just play a minute of it. I'm very bad at large room. And it was easily one fourth the size of the room it was in. Uh, Were you able to go inside? No, I wanted to, but the others did go inside. Yeah, they went inside. I was not permitted to do that. Not being... Yeah, and the, one of the others would be Einstein. So, um, yeah, so uh, Einstein was taken to the Roswell UFO, which I should not be a surprise in any way. Mussolini took Marconi, another prominent 
uh, you know, a brain of, of that country to the uh, Mussolini UFO. That's what I call it. The Italy UFO that the U.S. apparently acquired in 1945, but it went down or was at least found in 1933. And uh, the bodies on it were of the Nordic variety, is my understanding. So, anyway, but, uh, yeah, I, did we get those bodies, by the way? What happened to those bodies? Uh, I've heard, you know, I've heard tell that we, we got the UFO, uh, but I didn't hear anything about the bodies. What happened to those suckers in the Mussolini UFO case? Anyway, but, uh, yeah, so this is uh, Einstein, uh, Einstein's assistant testifying at the end of her life that indeed she and her boss dr albert einstein was taken to the roswell crash what did einstein do with that crash uh, did that have any impact on his research or on what he was working on i would be very curious to know the answer to that question what do you guys think what what what, what is the upshot of that that story uh, let me know in the comments below and if you have enjoyed this video please give me a big thumbs up i sure would appreciate it that'd be awesome smash the like button smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos join me on social media there are facebook and twitter links below i would love to see you guys there and if you could share this video on social media that would be super helpful uh, if you wanted to support the channel, there's a super chat, there's a PayPal, uh, you can, yeah, links below there. You can buy, buy one of my books. If you like fantasy and science fiction, you might very well like one of my books and it would, uh, help the channel. There are plenty of other videos for you to check out on Cosmic Road. And until next time, this is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.